Hello, welcome everyone. This video is going to highlight results from the WOOST study, and that was presented at ESC 2012. WOOST is an acronym for what is the optimal antiplatelet and anticoagulant therapy in patients with oral anticoagulation and coronary stenting. And WOOST looked at patients on long-term warfarin because of AFib, okay? And they took into consideration that about 30% of these patients have ischemic heart disease and they undergo PCI, thus having an indication for aspirin and clopidogrel. And because they were already on warfarin for their AFib, these patients are on the so-called triple therapy, aspirin, clopidogrel, and warfarin. The WOOST trial randomized 573 patients on warfarin for their AFib to either A, aspirin and clopidogrel, in addition to their warfarin, or B, clopidogrel, in addition to their warfarin. They then followed these patients for a year. The primary endpoint was all bleeding events, and that's very interesting, right? So I would have thought that the primary outcome would have been ischemic events, like in many of the other antiplatelet trials or anticoagulant trials, right? So there's, you know, trials like Ticagrelor in uh, uh, Plato, Dabigatron in Rely, Prazogrel, Triton, Timmy 38. I mean, all these trials, they look at ischemic events as a primary endpoint, right? So the point here is that the study is quite different from that standpoint, and that's important to know. And, you know, they'd probably need a lot more patients to power for ischemic events, so maybe that's part of all of this. I, I don't know. I'm not sure why they designed it like this, but they did. Now, the difference here was drastic. So patients randomized to dual therapy, i.e. clopidogrel and warfarin, 19.5% of them had a bleeding event. Now, compare that, 19.5% in dual therapy to 45% of patients in the triple therapy group that had a bleed. It's drastic. So a number needed to harm about four when you put patients on triple therapy. Now, it's important to know how bleeding was defined, right? So here in Woost, they used the Timmy bleeding score, and that was broken down into Timmy minimal, Timmy minor, and Timmy major. So defining Timmy bleeding is as follows. So Timmy major is defined as any intracranial bleed, so that's automatic, Timmy major if you have an intracranial bleed, or a greater than or equal to 5 gram per deciliter decrease in the hemoglobin concentration. So that's Timmy major. Timmy minor, this is an observed blood loss with greater than or equal to 3 grams per deciliter of hemoglobin. That's Timmy minor. Timmy minimal is basically all, any, all other bleeding. Okay, so minimal bleeds, I, I don't really know, but skin, IV site lines maybe, stuff like that. Uh, and anything less than 3 grams, of, uh, uh, grams per deciliter of hemoglobin. So looking at just Timmy major bleeds, in the dual therapy group, 3.3% of patients experienced a Timmy major bleed. And in the triple therapy group, 5.8% experienced a Timmy major bleed. So here we, we have a much smaller difference compared to the overall bleeding, right? And they don't give a p-value either, I don't think, so I can't tell you if that's significant or not. But dual therapy, 3.3% with major bleed, 5.8% in the triple therapy group with a major bleed. Now let's look at Timmy minor bleeds. In the dual therapy group, 11.2% of patients experience a Timmy minor bleed. And in the triple therapy group, 27.2% experience a Timmy minor bleed. Now again, uh, much more drastic. So I've, I've seen other studies that classify both Timmy minor and major. They lump them together as severe bleeds. Now you can probably argue over this stuff all day long. But the, the bottom line here, the take home point is that there was more bleeding with triple therapy. All right, now here they break down bleeding by site. So three intracranial bleeds in each group, eight GI bleeds in the dual therapy, 20 GI bleeds in triple, 16 access site bleeds in dual, 20 access site bleeds in triple, seven skin bleeds in dual, 30 skin bleeds in triple, and 20 other bleeds in dual, 48 other bleeds in, in triple, okay? There you go. All right ischemic endpoints. Okay, here we go. At one year, we have the following secondary endpoints, right? Ischemic endpoints are secondary. And most striking, and what most people probably don't know about this, 
uh, study is that the mortality rate was just 2.6% in the dual therapy group, i.e. clopidogrel and warfarin, versus 6.4% in triple therapy, i.e. aspirin, clopidogrel, and warfarin. And that did reach significance, so p-value of 0.027, okay? MI, uh, TBR, stroke, and stent thrombosis did not reach significance. And limitations were as followed. And this is just my opinion, but it was a small study, just 573 patients, not powered adequately for stent thrombosis. Uh, bleeding being the primary endpoint, uh, you know, I think this can be hard to interpret. Like, does IV line bleeding count? Um, we know that skin bleeds count, you know, but how significant are those? Uh, so difficult to interpret. And finally, there were only two arms. And one could maybe argue that more arms would have been better. For example, why not have an aspirin and warfarin group as another combo? Okay. So in summary, WOOST study. So first study in AFib patients to show that dual therapy with clopidogrel and warfarin is safe when compared to triple therapy, i.e. aspirin plus clopidogrel plus warfarin. Um, I must say this is the first randomized controlled trial. Okay, there's been some other registry stuff and observational stuff that's looked at this, okay? So until now, many of these patients were more likely to get a bare metal stent than a drug eluting stent, and that was to reduce the time that they'd be on triple therapy. So that was beginning to be a trend in practice. Uh, and finally, the study included 573 patients on oral anticoagulation, that underwent PCI between 2008 and 2011. And for more information on this, there's a large Danish registry looking into the same topic. And so, you know, that's a paper you can look at, uh, the Danish registry, and hopefully there's going to be more studies to come. All right? So worst part of this study for me, it's the fact that the primary outcome was bleeding of all types. I mean, did we honestly even have to do a trial to figure out that bleeding was going to be higher in the triple therapy group, you know, the patients that were on more bleeding medications? I, I think that was almost obvious to many people. And typically, we look at ischemic endpoints as the primary endpoint, with bleeding events being the secondary endpoint. So I alluded to this earlier, that almost every study you've looked at in the past with anticoagula uh, anti new anticoagulation medicines or antiplatelets, they look at ischemic endpoints as the primary uh, so this trial has to be redone, putting ischemic endpoints as the primary endpoint. You know, then you can power the trial for stent thrombosis, MI, CV death, and things like that. Again, I think most of us could have said confidently prior to the study that bleeding was going to be higher in the triple therapy group. In contrast, I don't think any of us could have really confidently said that ischemic events would be higher in one group versus the other. But, you know, I think people would probably lean more towards dual therapy. So, and that, you know, I think is probably the worst part for me. Best part, I like the fact that this study addresses a big, huge topic. So it's provocative. And not only that, but the results are striking. So this study suggests that dual therapy, i.e. clopidogrel and warfarin, may be as effective and safer than triple therapy, i.e. aspirin, clopidogrel, and warfarin. And that's in treating patients that have AFib who need warfarin and that subsequently undergo PCI sometime in their lifetime. But again, uh, the study needs to be redone or further studies need to be done looking at uh, ischemic events as the primary endpoint. So that's it. So thanks for joining. So long, everyone. Goodbye.